Hello, this is Raving Reviews 125 here, and today I'll be reviewing the HTC Desire C. The HTC Desire C measures 107mm tall by 61mm wide and 12mm thick. Now this is just a rough measurement uh, so it's easier to understand what to get rather than going to the decimal points. So it weighs 98 grams for a battery and, a, and it has a 3.5 inch screen which is 320 by 480 pixels. Its processor is clocked at 600 megahertz and it has 512 megabytes worth of RAM. It runs on Android 4.0 which is ice cream sandwich but it has HTC Sense version 4 overlay on it. That's enough about hardware. Let's move on to the software. So this is the lock screen. You've got the ring that you pull to unlock it. And you can get little shortcut icons here for quick access to apps. Now if you haven't got a password set, you can access your notifications, go through them, and clear them if you don't want them. So let's unlock this. And here we come into the launcher. You may have noticed, or not, this isn't the default launcher. This is Nova Launcher, a third party launcher in the App Store. However, it runs really smoothly on this device. Animations coming up nicely and are easily scrollable and it's a beauty to use. The notification bar up here is nicely laid out, if a little simple. You do not get your quick settings, however, which is a shame. And it's just notifications only. You do have a settings button up here now, which you could press to go to your to go to the settings menu. Apps load up quickly on this device. Well, I say quickly, but they actually take a while unless they're loading in RAM. So, the scrolling isn't as nice in some of the apps. However, the animations are quite nice. So, as you can see, you get some nice animations. It takes a while for the photos to buffer on the gallery app. So, let's click on this one here. It fades into it. Animations on the actual sense itself is really nice, I have to admit. And I actually quite like how HTC has developed it. Even on the camera, it's snappy to load. And it's quick at taking photos rapidly. You can also record video, in portrait and landscape. You have different settings and filters, which is nice for the photos. You have no effect, grayscale, sepia, negative, stylized, pasteurized, and aqua. You also get quite a few settings in the camera as well, where you can change the image resolution, video quality, review duration, and image adjustments. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the, um, it's a 5 megapixel camera, so you'll get decent photos, or they won't be the most stunning photos you can possibly get from a phone. You can easily access the gallery here too via the bottom corner. Of course I took photos of just blank screens so that's what you're going to get if it loads. <laughs> oh and it's actually got a video there as well. Speaking of video, video is really nice on this device. If I load up just say this video here, the sound quality is nice on there. And you can easily take photos during the video, which is a nice feature to have, of course, in case you miss the perfect opportunity due to recording. So it's coming out of that and moving on. I can safely say, if you're going to get this phone for gaming, do. Because games not only take a long time to load up, but don't actually play properly. Of course, during the early days of this phone, they could. However, after a while, when you start running out of space, etc., games take longer, and load, longer to load, and in the end, are unplayable. Take Dead Trigger, for example. Like, it's a really graphical, intense game about zombies. And, of course, it will take a while to load. However, it takes stupidly long to load on here. It's really hard to back out of afterwards. So we're in the game now after it's loaded, and uh, this is the map. Of course, this bit is ni it's nice and scrolls easily. It's quite snappy, surprisingly. So let's go into a mission. Let's do main quest. 
properly. And let's wait for that to load. Okay, so the game should have finally loaded now. It just came off the loading screen. Here we go. So, as you can see, I'm moving forward, and you can see where it starts lagging and slowing down on frame rate. Of course, I haven't played this game for a while, but as you can see, it is lagging. Of course, I've been deleting apps beforehand, so it may be slightly smoother. But then we expect to get amazing frame rates for this device. And the more zombies there are in the game, you know, the longer it takes for the frame rate. But, okay, that sounds stupid, but you kind of get the idea at least. It starts so uh, lagging, should I say, with a really low frame rate. It gets harder and harder to play. That, and I just suck at this game. Come on, out of the game. Let's look at the multitasking features of here. So, you have a recent apps button down the bottom. Which will show you recent apps that you've used. You can easily jump from one app to the other. If, however, it will take a couple of seconds to come up. And you don't get any animations here, I'm afraid. It just jumps. And like, say, the Nexus 4. For example, which has animations when it comes up with recent apps and switches. So I'm just going to re-enable my look, my um, look, uh, lock and screen disabler. No lock. It's just really nice. It's just one of the many apps you could use to customize the phone. And then after that, it just comes up. Of course, no lock's slightly better though, because when it's been started, you could just do it over and over again. And like your usual lock screen switch take a certain time to come into effect. Widgets are quite nice on here too. And that's always a bonus for any Android phone of course. It makes it easier to use the phone and a more pleasurable experience without having to actually go into any apps. Moving on, I said earlier since it's nice and uh, well, it makes the phone easier to use. It looks nice as well. And it really does customise the phone a lot. And it takes away the pure Android feel from it sometimes. With its own skin. Of course, there's no way to go back to the default one unless you flash a custom ROM. Which I do not want to do, however. Because I've stuck with Sense. Now, of course, with all this talk about Sense, you're probably wondering what the default launcher looks like. So I loaded it back up. The dock down the bottom has a nice little theming to it, which I actually personally quite like. And HTC does have quite a nice widgets. The status the notification bar at the top is also transparent. However, there's not much for customization on here. As you can see, there's only a simple swipe effect when sw swiping between screens. Same sort of thing with the uh, app drawer as well, I'm afraid. Not really much customization. You can't do anything except from add these tabs or get rid of the tabs. Which is a shame. However, it is a decent launcher for beginners. But you'll probably want to move on to a better launcher. Now, with Android being Android, you do get a large choice of launchers you could use instead. Take, for example, Launcher 7 for if you like the iPhone look. You could also get Launcher 8 as well, which looks like the Windows 8 phone. However, I just prefer Launcher 7. You can also get other ones, such as SF Launcher, which looks a bit like Google Now, and acts a bit like it too, shall I say, with its different tiles and the uh, top. Of course, you can look, make it look like another phone as well. For example, a Spire Launcher makes it look like an iPhone. So, the customization options are pretty much endless. Downloading new apps is also quite easy. You just simply jump to the Google Play Store, go into apps or games or whatever category you want to choose. Speaking of which, you've got your categories here on the side. And just keep going until you find an app you like. Or you can search at the top for a specific app. So one bug, one major bug I found with this phone is the camera app. If you go into the camera and lock your device, of course it's probably just due to no lock, but 
I can't really be sure, so I'm just going to point it out. But if you leave it locked like that for long enough, about a minute or two, eventually it won't come back on and you won't be able to turn it on at all or anything. And what you have to do is come to the back here and remove the battery and put it back in again. And then you can turn your phone on. And while we're here, you put your, your micro SD card in the slot there, and your SIM card goes underneath the battery. I also, I also like the um, fact that HTC has made a complete back of it red on every single colour of this phone, and it just looks absolutely stunning and amazing. And like, it's a very nice little touch. It's one of the things they do. It just adds a bit of quality to the phone. It makes it feel a lot more expensive and nicer than what it should be on its budget. Although it is a year old, the HTC Desassi is actually a great smartphone for those on the budget. It performs well and it looks good as well. It has an easy to use interface thanks to Sense. Even if it does take away the Android look, it makes it look a bit too dumbed down sometimes. Practically all the apps I've come across is compatible, give or take a couple. And it has a British screen and acts like an expensive phone too, give, if you take away the animations of course. However, apps will sometimes crash, especially the bigger ones, and especially if you lock the phone or switch to another app. It, speaking of which, it's not exactly the best for multitasking. I found it only holds about 3-4 apps and RAM at a time for you to switch to instantly, which is kind of pathetic. Speaking of which, the RAM is quite low for this at 512 megabytes. And like, you know, quite a lot of stuff takes around 30 megabytes of each, and the system uses about 300 megabytes itself, which means that you've got next to no space left to do what you want. And of course, the camera bug is actually quite a pain, especially when you don't realise it. And, you know, you want to get a perfect shot, and then you can't. So that's always a shame. Of course, one of the best things about this smartphone, though, is the battery life. Like, it is honestly amazing for this. And like it's only a 1,230 milliamp battery inside here, but it lasts me on average three days of low to medium usage. It's like you know maybe a game every now and then, music every day. Three days is quite a lot for a smartphone. And like you know, people going, oh, I need to charge my nap. It's like I'm still running. So yeah, I have a rating of 10. I'd rate this phone a. 7.2 out of 10 because it's great and it costs 140 pounds and performs well great for a first smartphone or perhaps a second one if you're not looking in the market for something like a, a nexus or a samsung galaxy s4 or nick 3 it's a great little phone and the screen is actually a really nice size easy accessible just use one f finger like your phone don't have to stretch or anything it's nice, easy to use. And so, yeah, that's the HTC Desire C, people. A brilliant smartphone for those on the budget. Or for those that just want a really good, nice looking phone at low price. Is it, this is Raving Reaver 25 here, signing out.